O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We will read, sorry, we will read Psalm 36, verses 5 through 11 found on page 632 of the Book of Common Prayer, in unison. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountain, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delight. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray in the language of our hearts. Padre nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, y perdónanos nuestras ofensas, como también te demoramos a los que nos ofenden. Que Dios de caer en tentación y libranos del mal. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for the bishops of your church, Holy Church, especially for the Right Reverend Martin Scott Fields, Diocese of West Missouri. With our family in the Anglican Communion, we ask you, Father, to bless our common life. Today, we especially give you thanks for the Anglican Church and the Diocese of Bari, the Church of Nigeria. Prayers of thanksgiving for the 84th birthday of Lucy Nazro, an SSW alumna, class of 1966, and a dear friend of the seminary. We pray for those in any need or trouble, especially the White Spunners, Williams, Nazro, Gilbert, and Ambus families. 
And now, O oh Lord, we offer you our thanksgiving and petitions with our lips and in our hearts. Holy and loving God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do what you desire through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of, the, of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus says, You do not always have me. Please be seated. The biographer of Emily Dickinson, Richard Sewell, gave a lecture at Williams College when I first got there called A Sense of an Ending. Richard Sewell's wife had just died and he reflected on his grief around the time of her loss. And he quoted a line from Emily Dickinson. I tried to find the exact line this morning, but I couldn't, and I'm sure Claire knows it. But this is what I remember it being. It is the fading light that lends the sight. The fading light that lends the sight. Holy Week is the week of the fading light that will turn out to be revelatory. It is the long goodbye. It culminates in Holy Thursday with the washing of feet, what a former student called the solemn liturgy of departure. Holy Week opens today with the anointing of Jesus by Mary of Bethany from the Gospel of John. In John, this scene in chapter 12 is a microcosmic last supper within the biological family that includes Jesus. It is also a proleptic foot washing by Mary, the one who prefigures Christ. Her beautiful deeds, her silent sacraments, 
In both the Gospels of Mark and John, what she does is criticize for being too expensive or not useful, not effective to address social conditions. In John, the narrator comes storming in and leaves nothing to the imagination, spelling it out in black and white. Judas didn't really care for the poor. In case you didn't get that, he didn't really care for the poor because he was stealing and he was bad. Okay? But the contrast that makes the story work in both Mark and John, and that Jesus highlights in his interpretation of the anointing, is the contrast between the permanent and the temporary. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. The temporary. The note that is struck at the opening of Holy Week is the shortness of time, which creates the urgency to honor Jesus' body. The fact that time is running out, I think of that horrible hourglass that the Wicked Witch turns over in The Wizard of Oz and tells Dorothy that she just has the time left for that sand to flow through the glass. That's the sense of the urgency and scariness of Holy Week. That's the fading light that lends the sight. That's the fading light that means it's time to crack the jar. It's time to act. It's time now to show love. I invite you into the practice this Holy Week to the task of noticing. Notice extra hard. Hear the reading, their details. Attend closely to the scripture and watch the movements in the liturgy enacted here in the mosque. Let the contours of these live oaks and the shape of your classmates and colleagues' faces appear even more clearly and more vividly in the fading light of the last week of Jesus' life. Now the Gospel of John is characterized by the irony created by the spiritual, mistaken for the literal, by people who see and speak the obvious without recognizing the invisible truth. People who say things, take things literally, like Nicodemus. Can a person enter into a mother's womb again and be born? Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. How can I get this living water? The literal, which doesn't get you all the way to the spiritual. But in this story, it is Jesus who is speaking literally. You will not always have me. Just like he did in the reading that Jane preached from last week, where I am going, you cannot come. Later, during the long goodbye, when Jesus speaks to his disciples, he speaks the opposite. He speaks again and again of his abiding presence with the community, the sending of the comforter, the dwelling in us and we in him, the complete polar opposite of you do not always have me. And in my house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. It's the complete polar opposite of where I am going. You cannot come. Why are these last days of Jesus so important in the gospel and so important to us in our liturgy of Easter? Why don't we just exult in the permanent. Why do we have this week, these long days of lingering in the temporary? We do this because human life is temporary. 
human life is short. The pandemic has brought that home. Human life ends. Your first grade year ends. Your time in seminary ends. Your literal relationship with your parents ends. You will not always have me. The Gospels and Holy Week speak of that stubborn truth of finitude and death and temporariness and gives it voice and honors it. Time is short. Notice everything. Pay attention to everything. Give thanks for everything. That's the fading light that lends the sight. It's time now to crack the jaw. Time to act. Time to show love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.